We're live, are we? We will be live in a moment. Just checking to see the screen. Yeah, we are live, I believe so. No, brother. How are you, Wimmer? Are you there? We are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTM Sports. Our second interview of the evening. This time we are in Ireland. Well, we are all in Ireland, BWT and Sports. We are now live with unbeaten heavyweight Niall Kennedy. Niall, good evening, my good friend. How are you? Good, Emran. How are you? I'm good. It's uh, kind of strange to be doing an interview with somebody in the same country as you, just down the road from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on. You're not. We're not far away from each other. We just keep missing each other. I think. We're going to bump into each other again soon. Perfect. So how are things with uh, you, Nora? For those for those people who don't know who you are, first of all, please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Niall Kennedy. I'm a unbeaten Irish heavyweight from Gorian County, Wexford. Had eight fights, eight wins, five by KO. Massachusetts state champion. Okay. Um, so... That's, that's that's the bread and butter part out of the way. Okay, now for a lot of people, I've I've met you personally and I find you a very interesting character. And uh, sometimes we talk to you and you seem uh, not really happy about life. But today you're going to be very happy, aren't you, Niall? Yeah, yeah, I know everything is good. Everything is good. Because you've got a big fight coming up, Niall. You should be excited. Yeah, I know I am, I am. I'm trying to hide that. I'm trying to continue. And an excitement for them. <laughs> so tell us about the big fight. Come on, Sheila, spill the news. Tell us. Yeah, I, I fight for the IBO international title and the New England heavyweight title on September the 15th. It's a headline fight in Foxwoods Casino. Um, I fight Alexis Santos. He's the champion at the minute. So it's a tough fight. He's a, he's a tremendous boxer, but it's a very winnable fight. And We've trained very hard. We're very happy to get the fight. So what what made you actually, how did the fight come about being made in the first place? See, I'm very lucky. I have an association with Murphy's Boxing. Um, Ken Casey, I would drop kick Murphy's. And Sean Sullivan and Adam Mazniak, Mike Bloom, they all worked hard to get me an opportunity out there. So with the connections through Spike and Packy, Packy Collins, um, I've linked up with Murphy's boxing, and the, the, I've had five fights in America. This will be my sixth fight, and uh, to be fair to Ken, he's a man of his word. He's delivered on what he said he would do, so he, he told me to win the Massachusetts title. Get myself in a position that was mandatory for the New England, and I've done that. So. Okay, talk to me about this. So you're, you're fight, you fought for the Massachusetts title. How do you... Get eligibility to fight for a title that's American or in America. See, I'm lucky. I have dual. I have a, I'm not dual citizenship, but I have an American boxing license as well. Ah. And to get eligibility, you have to, you have to have competed over three on over three occasions in, in that state body. Right. So I boxed five on um, occasions in Massachusetts now. So, then. Uh, what's his name? Jesse Barbosa accepted the fight, so we had we had a good fight there on March the eighteenth. I won the fight. So. How did that fight go for you in America? Yeah, it went well. Went through some rocky patches and not really in the fight, probably more psychologically than than physically. And just probably sometimes have a little tiny little bit of self doubt. So I I. I've got rid of a lot of demons since that fight. Um, yeah, it was good for me. It was it was very good. I, it was an eight round knockout, so it sure I carried my power into the later rounds. Yeah, it was good. It was my first time doing eight rounds. This will be my first time doing ten rounds. Um, if it goes that far, so. Okay. Yeah, Let's talk about the difference of fighting in America as opposed to staying in Ireland and trying to build a heavyweight career in Ireland. Yeah. Well. The opportunity I've got now, I wouldn't have got at home. Uh, I'm not signed to any match one company. I haven't got an Olympic medal around me. Um, so I suppose I'm 33 as well. So the allure is a massive. 
for okay. someone in my position. Um, so I was just lucky. In America, the, the other side of it as well, if I'm over here boxing, I'm boxing journeyman. In America, they come to win. Everyone I've boxed so far has come to win. Now, I'm not saying they're not journeymen, but my last, my last two opponents haven't been in America. Any of, uh, Henry Namu was a very good opponent. And, and Jesse Barbosa definitely came to win. He brought a big crowd and everything. So. And you That's told me the the, so. What for you? I mean, this may sound obvious to the person who's on the, in the armchair, the keyboard warrior. But the difference between you taking five knockover opponents and then fighting guys who are going to fight back. Tell us what the difference is in that for you, Niall. Well, if you're well, I wouldn't even say knockover opponents. I I boxed Yabar Mar Marinchev in the Red Cow in my second fight, and I'm probably over at over. Anxious, maybe as well. Um, I couldn't get rid of him, but when you get a negative opponent, you don't, it's very hard to look good. Right. You're sort of there, you're expected to win. You're on a lose lose nearly. But when you have an opponent that's a real opponent and he's coming to win, it brings the best out of you. Okay. So, how much, what's your, what would you say is your ideal fighting weight for you as a heavyweight? Um. I won't be a whole lot. Uh, 16 and a half stone will be my perfect way of hopefully coming into the ring, but we'll wait and see. So I've done a lot of strength in this camp. I'm a little bit bigger, but my main, my main thing is staying over 16 stone, staying fit, staying fast, quick, and nice agility. So hopefully that's where I'll do it. So you talk about strength training. That's what you've done a lot more for this fight. Is there any reason particularly mm. you've been doing more strength training? Is that a feel that has been a weakness for you or you feel that you could be stronger or why have you gone down that route? No, well, I wouldn't say it's on a weakness, but it's definitely something I can improve on. Everything right. I can improve on. I'm, I'm, I'm by no way very good. We've improved on footwork. We've improved on head movement. I had a really good jab. We, we, completely taking my jab apart and really worked on that so no look i don't think i'm 33 and i'm at this since i was seven 77 i'd say i still won't know enough like so you have to keep evolving i think of course you gotta keep evolving and keep improving so what have you done in terms of sparring partners in the fight have you done you will you be doing the majority of sparring in ireland or you do the majority of sparring in america no no i've done army sparring at home here um, so I haven't been out of the country. I don't know with, don't know lads, good lads at home. Um, yeah, so no, I won't mention names, but we've had good sparring. We've had very good sparring. Okay, uh, have you got enough quality sparring in Ireland? Because I don't know the heavyweight scene in Ireland. Have you got enough quality sparring for you to get you over the line to win the next fight? Do you feel? Yeah, the, the sparring I've been getting. Yeah, no, it's quality. It's quality sparring. Very good level. I've been sparring are yeah, they're good enough to get me over the line here. Yeah. Okay, were you ever considered for the Fury camp by any chance? I there was years ago there was something in the in the pipeline, but I realize you see I, I have a full time job as well, so uh, like I can't take all all weeks or weeks off that end, so Okay, it's not a problem, not a problem. But, uh, a lot of the bigger camps want you for a good few weeks, like so I can only really get a week off at a time. We've got our regulars in the room, Mikey being one of them, and he asked the question, there's a very funny question, people says, do you think you could beat Conor McGregor? That's <laughs> 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 a question, that wasn't me. <laughs> He's Connor is Superman nearly at this stage, I think he's gonna I think he's evolved he talking about evolving, he's evolved as a as a human and as a athlete. He's a tremendous athlete. He should be an inspiration for every young Irish man that's that that wants to do anything. Not just if the if a chap is on the dole and he wants to be a plumber, he, he should be an inspiration for that, not only if I can fight him like so. He's a fair play to him. So Will we see you at a press conference at any time saying, you'll do nothing? Will you say anything like that? Or will you... Uh... 
you know, no. that won't be happening, no? No. Because you know that people can be quite stereotypical. They think, well, if one Irishman, one crazy Irishman can do it, then all Irishmen will do it. So... Yeah, true. We have Spike. Spike does enough of that in our gym, so we leave that to Spike, I think. What did you make of the Conor McGregor, uh, the um, exercise, loosening up the shoulders? What did you think of it? Sure, it works for him. Whatever works for you, what you're comfortable with, do it. You can't. The man, the man's movement is second to none. Like you know, I mean, he he's he, he's very good at capoeira. He's very good at MMA. He's good at like the man's movement is second to none. He he's he's a legend in fairness to what he does. Like it's probably not. It's well, it's definitely not what boxing people are used to seeing. But it, it didn't do him any harm, did it? No. You look uh, at the stats. Do you do you agree? That he should have taken that fight against Floyd Mayweather. I would take a fight with Anthony Joshua, Dylan White, and Derek Chisora at the same time for the money that he got. Would you stop? Of course, I agree with. <laughs> hey, listen! After you put that out, I will put that in quotes. I will take a fight with Anthony Joshua, Dylan White, and Derek Chisora all in the same night for that money. You never know; you might still get it. This world I know, of boxing is so crazy. You don't know what'll happen next, Nile. It's crazy. I, you couldn't. How could you blame that man? Sure, if them figures are being brandished about and and he's getting it, and he's he's a publicity. He, he's brilliant. Like he said, his fights. I think it's brought. It's brought pay per view pay per view buys by a sixteen million or something like that. I think it's brought a buy. So, I think that answers the question in its own right. Absolutely. So, from a money standpoint, you know McGregor's done very well for himself. He can't complain. He's laughing all the way to the bank. Mm-hmm, definitely. So, um, I'd say he might buy the bank. <laughs> he might. The Irish bank, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, bank, what, does a fight, what, does, what does a fighter like that, an Irishman, doing what he does there, what does that do for Niall Kennedy as a boxer, being from Ireland, and, you know, you could say he's a local. What does it do for you? It's inspiring, isn't it? It has to drive us on. We all want to be at that level. Um, now, whether Connor was at that level, our people thought he was at that level as a boxer. I think he's proved a lot of people wrong. Um, we all want to get there. You know, we're all not. We're not in it. We're not walking up blind alleys. We all have dreams and aspirations. But fair play to him. He's just. I think he's an inspiration. I think. If you listen to the man, like he's, I think he's just the way he speaks. People call it arrogance. I don't know. I, I sort of, I, I like it. Uh, and I'm not into that at all, but I actually like the way he goes out himself. That's how he sells himself, so you can't knock that. Really. He, he does what he does for himself and it works for him. Definitely, it's worked for him. And Outside of Connor, I don't. I, I genuinely, I've never met the man. But um, I spent a little bit of time with his coach, John Cadman. That he's he's one very, very, very clever man. Brilliant man to be in his company, an absolute gentleman. I have to say, um, a lovely fellow. And the fact that the success has come, I'm delighted it's come from because it's come for the gym and it's come for John and it's come. You know what I mean? Like they're great people. Like. And I genuinely, if you, I'm not plugging his book, but if anyone, he has a book out called Win and Learn, and that's his mantra, like, that's just the way it is. They have, like, they haven't lost this fight, they'll learn from that fight. If he decides to box again, I don't know, he, he'll, definitely be, he'll definitely be improved from this performance. Absolutely, absolutely, he'll, he can only improve. So let's talk more about your career. Um, this fight coming up, what do you know about your opponent? Tell us about your opponent, what do you know about him? Yeah, he's 18 fights, 17 wins. His one loss came to Daniel Marks, is it, Jamanda, Joe Parker, Bedford. Okay. Um, he, yeah, that was his one loss, but he'd done his ACL in the third round, I think, so it was sort of a retirement more than a loss. And he mm -hmm. came back he came back and then av avenged that loss. He took your man out in a couple of rounds, I think, so... Oh no, he's good. Listen, I have no, I have no flies on me. I know he's a, he's explosive. He's um very quick, 
good movement. He's, he's an all round good fighter. He's about six foot. He's a little bit smaller than me in height, but so he'll be about the same way. How tall are you again, Six four. Okay. Six four. Six four. Okay. So, yeah, but a little bit of range on him. So that look, if I if I'm not at the races, it's disappointing night, but I know well enough I will be at the races. So. Uh, so okay, this fight you've got now coming up. Um, also, Spike O'Sullivan's going to be fighting Gabe Rosada. That's a big fight as well. Mm, it is. It's a great fight. The Irish brilliant are fight coming for fans. For fight fans, it's a brilliant fight. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, tell us how Spike's been in camps, because you know. As well, it's probably the fittest I've seen him. Well, definitely the strongest I've seen him. He's um. He's working with his strength and conditioning coach, our coach in Cork, Dave O'Donnell. Okay. Oh, Connell, sorry. In the Maradike, he's a. I've only met Dave once, but he they, they have a great, great setup on the down there, a fantastic setup. So, he's, he's more or less on the weight now already. So he's he's just getting stronger into the weight. And um, look, if if, fit. Um. No injuries, nothing like that. There's, I don't. There's very few middleweights in the world that touch Spike, in my opinion. Sometimes he can, he can be unlucky with little niggly injuries, but at the minute he's flying it. He's no injuries, so I, I'd expect that will be a massive statement for Gary. It will be absolutely. I, 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 like Martin Murray got a decision over this man, and yeah, he got, he won, and, and congratulations, Martin. But, it was close, and I think if Spike does this the way I believe he'll do it, and the way I've seen him perform and train, I think he takes this man out, to be honest with you. In terms of the Eubank fight, you saw the Eubank fight. What were your thoughts on the Eubank fight? Or do you think that's part beyond gone? It's something in the past with Spike now. Yeah. Do you know what? I think maybe everyone underestimated Eubank a little bit at the time. And like I know he's he's one of the smaller world titles, but he, he is a world champion now. Since Spike's fight, he's went on and destroyed everyone. But if you look at like Spike in that fight, Spike definitely had the win in that fight. And um, just he bursted his eardrum and his balance was affected. So look, we are he won't make an excuse. I'm not making excuses for him. I I think if he got the opportunity again, he'd avenge it. But but he's my teammate. I'm not saying he should. I think he has to walk his way back into that position. But I tell you again. Okay. All right. Let's talk. So now you've got this position. Should you win this fight and come through, where does that? What what would be the game plan after that fight? Oh, um, Packy and Ken will work on that. I, I'm not smart enough to be picking game plans. I just try and go in and do my job and hopefully do it impressively. I think I will do it impressively. I've trained. I've trained ridiculously hard. So, um, if it goes, look, if it goes to plan, it'll open massive doors. I'll be top 10 ranking with the IBO. I'll be in the top 50 in the world, if not the top 30. So, It'll open doors. People will have to start noticing me. Okay. Um, how much is the risk and reward for this fight for you? Have they, have they, have they kind of said to you, look, this is a take, this is a very dangerous fight, or they've said to you, you know what, this is a winnable fight, or no, nah, mate, you'll take this guy out. What's the, what's the sort of conversation around camp like? Oh, it's it's, it's a massive. Of course, it's a massive risk. He's he's 17 wins, 15 by KO. He's in the top 50 in the world. It's a risk, but I think the reward is there. I'm 43 as well. I don't want to be fighting in Germany, man. I don't want to be hanging around. Like I, I'm not saying I want to box world champions. I'm not saying I want to jump into that yet. If it comes and we prepare for it, but... I think it, like you ha you have to learn to walk before you can run. But we're in, we're at a slow, steady jog now, and if I'm if I'm going to go to the next level, I have to go through tough opponents, really good opponents, and this lad is a really good opponent. And well, he's not even the opponent; he's the champion. I'm the opponent, so 
fair play to him. He's given me a massive opportunity by accepting the fight. So we'll see. Well, it, it, it's my reward is is getting this continuing this journey, and 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 seeing how far it takes me. So in terms of it's Luke de Bella, it's a Luke de Bella fight, right? Yeah. Now, are they looking at you as you know a guy that they can look good? At? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a call promotion now. It's Louis de Bella and Murphy Boxing. All right, okay, okay, okay. Louis de Bella and Murphy Boxer. So when they look at Niall Kennedy, are they looking at you as, you know, easy work? Are they looking at you as hard work? Are they are they concerned about you? What's been the vibe coming from his camp? He's being very respectful from what I see. I hope that I hope to think of me as easy work. I hope to do. It suits me if to do sure what. Why would that man in America be if, with 17 knockouts be worried about it? Like, sir, huh? <laughs> no, I hope I hope he's thinking about me as easy work. So you, so what do you think is going to have to be the strategy for you? Is it going to be box, 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 use the left jab, keep him out and ping him with big right hands, or? I don't know. I don't know. I might try capoeira, maybe, will I? Try <laughs> capoeira, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know, so we don't know. The, the thing we've been working on is plan A. We've been working on plan B and we've been working on plan C. I think this is going to bring the best out of Alexis Santos. If it does, I have to be able to change it up. And for anyone that knows me, uh, I can box a bit. I'm starting to develop a little bit of a punch. So I look. Whatever he wants to do, we can do. We've covered all. We've covered all bases. So it's it's just about performing. Now. Is there any possibility? Capoeira might do. Capoeira might do though. Do you, um, is there any possibility of you potentially uh, boxing in the UK and boxing on UK shows? I am available to box wherever. Um, I haven't got a UK license at the moment though. Um, ah. it's, just, it's, it's never really been muted. So. I'm very look. I'm lucky. I've I've a good bit of family in America, and um, they're great supporters, and they come down and support me. of friends out there, so you know, I, wherever you're happiest, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. If, if it's working, you've got to keep it working. Um, in terms of sparring, I know you don't want to talk too much about it, but somebody's asked me the question: Have you ever had a chance to spar with Mike Perez? I have, yeah. The most gifted man I've ever been in the ring with. Okay. What's he like, punching power-wise and stuff? Phenomenal. The man has it all. He's an absolute stonewall gentleman. I call him a friend now, but he's 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 brilliant. He's gifted. Okay. Is it? I've done a, I've done a good, I've done a good bit of sparring with Mike. Yeah, he's 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 very good. What do you make of him moving down to cruiserweight? Are you shocked? Well, have, if you see the shape he's in, it's working for him. Do you know the thing about Mike, though, and I'll say this, if Mike got an opportunity at heavyweight in the shape he's in now, like, he, he'd do a lot of trouble. He, he'd put a lot of heavyweights in trouble. He's in phenomenal shape. Wow. He's a fantastic, fantastic. I couldn't sing his praises enough. He's a fantastic boxer. Coming up to Everywhere. the perfect... The, the Povetkin fight, I heard he was doing, he's training himself in a garage. How did he get to that state? Um, that I tell you, he's, he's a very interesting man. He's definitely worth talking about. That's not for me to talk about. But that the Mike Perez that boxed Povetkin and the Mike Perez that who did it, boxed, he, he had a draw as well. Who was the draw with? I'm not sure. He fought Brian Jennings. Jennings well. was, yeah. They weren't the proper Mike Perez. Genuinely, that's all I say on the subject. But Mike Perez now, Mike Perez does a number on Jennings every day. You think you could set me up with an interview with Mr. Perez because he's hard to get. He's hard to nail. I wouldn't even put you in contact with him at the minute for the simple fact is that he's he that man is training like you wouldn't believe he he and he's he'll be W he'll be WBC cruiserweight champion very shortly. I can promise you that. Wow, that's a that's a big statement there, my friend. A big statement. I I tell you, the only one in that weight that I think is any is is even 
within a, a, an arse's roar of giving them trouble is and Usyk. But our Usyk, or Alexander yes. Usyk, he's phenomenal, a brilliant boxer as well. But I think his biggest thing is how awkward he is because he's a southpaw as well. But Mike is a southpaw with phenomenal hand speed, so that'll be an interesting fight if it goes if they meet in the final of that competition. What about Breedes and Gassiev? Breedes, he boxes Breedes in the quarter final. Um, so yeah, that's a tough. It's a tough fight. That man has proved himself. He's world championship fair play to him. Um, Gassiev is a bull strong. It's a, it's, it's an amazing tournament. Like they're, Jesus, unbelievable. Even in comparison to the super middleweights, it's just cruiserweights are all explosive. Every they're one all of them. They're killers in that division. They're all pu big punches. Yeah, so it could all go real quickly. Way, Mike Perez is. If, to answer that person's question, whoever wrote it in, an absolute animal, gifted. Now that's to Mikey there. Mikey asked the question about Perez. Um, he also says, um, who is it? Anybody else that you sparred? Not obviously this fight, but have you anyone else, big names that you may have sparred? People want to know more about your sparring, who you've worked with in the past. Um, I've done a lot of rounds with Tommy McCarthy. Done a lot of rounds with Sean Turner back in the day. Um, done a lot of rounds with most of the lads on the Irish scene. So, Con Conchie had been it. over. Yeah, Con as well. Yeah, not sparred Con. I've never really sparred Con a whole lot. Now. Okay. Okay. Um, have you got any thoughts about any other big fights coming up? Canelo versus Gennady Golovkin. Phenomenal fight. Brilliant fight. I fancy Canelo though for some reason. That's why I'm going as well. I'm going that way as well. I think Is it, are, are there any other fights that come to mind that you're interested in apart from the super eight um well i'm i'm very interested in that because it it'll be fantastic to see mike get what he deserves and but barda um who i tell you a very good irish fight is stephen armand and paul highland jr okay that's, tell us about it that's a tremendous fight um, I think it's for an IBF European title or something like that, as on the line as well as the Irish title. Okay. And people haven't seen, I like I'm gonna be looking on the map. I I genuinely think Stephen Armand is is one of the most gifted boxers not to be a world champion. Right. But, um, he's gone. He, like that to be a tremendous fight. Paul Highland is an exceptional boxer as well. Stevie will have to be on his game, but. I think that's a great fight. Um, Spike and, and Rosado, or is it Rosado? Rosado, Rosado, that's the one. Yeah, that's that's a serious fight as well. Um, who else? Craig O'Brien of our gym, another good lad. He's he he's a county title on the line. He's boxing very well. Okay. But fights Irish fights, I suppose that. Ryan Barnett, that's that's a brave fight. He's shown his quality in, in his opponents. So, okay, there are there, uh, the same person that asked you if you could beat McGregor asked this question. I think it's a bit more sensible. He asked the question, um, "What was your amateur record?" Um, mediocre, I'd say at best. Uh, I had, I'd say, at about one hundred and fifty fights, one hundred and thirty wins, one hundred and twenty wins. Well, that's a lot of wins. Yeah, yeah, I lost a good bit as well, but I can honestly say I don't think I ever lost sober. <laughs> you ever lost sober? Yeah, yeah, I know I was drinking too much when I was boxing as an amateur. You, so you, you were drinking and boxing? Oh, silly. I, I wasn't preparing properly and I wasn't putting, I definitely wasn't putting enough effort in, I'd say. Could you imagine what you'd done if you weren't drinking now? I can, I can, and it annoys me every night, for sure. Listen, I, I think we all need to go down them roads to see where we end up as well, but I'm happy now. Talk to us how you've overcome that, because people like to hear real stories. They want to hear about how a person overcomes those challenges and then moves on to be the success that they are. Yeah, I, I once, look, I've had a really, 
I have a good family behind me. I'm married now and a beautiful wife, great support structure. But years ago, like I, I went down silly roads and was drinking too much. So I lost the best friend when I was young and I struggled with that for a long time. But um, we have everything under the wraps now. The only thing I will say, if anyone is struggling with stuff, talk to someone, get help about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's fantastic what you're saying there. People sometimes feel that they can't talk to people. They shouldn't talk to people. Absolutely. Get help. Talk to somebody. Talk to someone you can trust. Yeah. Talk to them. And if you can't find someone to talk, find a professional to talk to. So important. Exactly. Yeah. Get help if you need it. Too. Absolutely. You have to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one man that we can talk about in the situation, Tyson Fury. It's a shame how his career suddenly just... Yeah, it's, it's sort of petered out, but don't be surprised. I think once he gets well, um, he can do whatever he wants. The man is he's that unpredictable. It's very hard to stay, but I think the most important thing, that man has a wife and family, so just to get to be well, and I think he is well at the minute, so uh, may God bless him and his family, and I hope everything is going well for him. Okay, there is a big fight happening in September. Huey Fury versus Joseph Parker. Your thoughts on that fight? I think Huey boxes the ears off him. Okay. Yeah, just plain and simple. I think Huey Fury is a very underrated boxer. Um, from what I'm hearing back, his power is improving as well. So I think I, I, I rate Joe Parker, but I don't rate him as one of the best heavyweights. Um, he's powerful, he's strong, but he's very, very hateable, so and I think Huey Huey's very quick. Okay. At the top Great of the camp. Okay. His family around him. His family around him. Good lads in sparring all the time. Um Khan, Vicken, the Aspinall chap. And uh Valen does be up there with him a lot. Of, you know, he they get a lot of good work in there, so best to look okay. for them. They're nice, they're nice people. Fury, Rich, very decent. Sorry, uh, Mark Richards says, where is he hoping to get in the heavyweight division in in boxing? The world title shot, European, etc. Um, each fight as it comes. This one will give me a top 10 ranking with the IBO. Um, so I'll head on from that. Maybe this will be, uh, this is a New England title, maybe the North American title after that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I I don't plan them directions. That's up to Kane and to Packy. So I just do what I'm told. I'm like a good a good dog. <laughs> if I put that line out as a tag for, I just do what I do. I just get to, I do what I do. I get told. What I get do. Oh, I forget what you. I forgot what you said there. I get told. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Repeat what you said again to me. Oh, no, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it, I think. Because I'm going to use it as a quote. As, <laughs> on, your, on your video. I'm sure people watch it. <laughs> no, we'll leave it off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my word stumbled on me. That's probably why. Okay. Um, okay. And when, when fighters say, I leave it to my management, don't you feel a bit concerned about that? Because... They could be setting you up for. You don't feel concerned at all. No, 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 I don't. No, Pascal Collins manages me, and I'd have no pro fights if it wasn't for him. So if I couldn't trust him, I'd just pack it in. Um, I'd only ever have one manager, and that could be Packy. Uh, I I hope to only ever have to work with Ken Casey and Mark Boxing. I think life is about the people you. Yeah. Put yourself aside, and I trust the people around me. So, so talk, talk a talk little bit. Having about, good people, it's the best out in it. Talk about these people, because uh, talk a little bit more about both characters that you're talking about there of Paddy's boxing. Um, well, Murphy's boxing. You have Ken Casey. Um, I, he's the, he's one. He's the lead singer and founder of Dropkick Murphy's the band. So, um, he people have known from that probably. I think what people probably don't know about him is he set up the Clada Fund and there's another couple of organisations in Boston that 
help people. Like he, he does a lot of work for people that have addiction issues. He does a lot of work for he done a lot of work for the people affected by the Boston Marathon. And so he's a tremendous man, really good heart and good nature. Wow. So yeah, you know, I, I Packy, um what can I say about him? Who takes on a thirty year old heavyweight with a media offer amateur record? Do you know what I mean? Um, I'd been up sparring him, helping out a couple of lads and I, I, I was away, I was after getting beaten in the senior semi final or final. And I just texted him and I said, Packy, would you be interested in, in me turning pro with you? And he said, No, there's no point in me lying to you. Find out if I have a marker for you. And he got back to me and he said, Yeah, we can do this. So, do you know that? It's true. You have to be around people that are fair and honest. To you, but... That's fantastic. It's great to hear that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we end? No, no, I'm all good. All good, I think. Uh, how do people... Anyone? Anyone in America from Wexford or from Gory or Wicklow or Dublin? Our Mayo, because Ray Milet, I want to say Ray Milet is on the undercard of this fight as well. Um, Foxwoods Casino, September the 15th. Massive card, massive opportunity for me. And I, I, I'd be honoured if you come down and help and support because I am the opponent. Um, but look, we, we'll get a job done and, and we'll give you something to cheer about that night. Uh, so we get the, the Irish are coming. Please, God, yeah. From Boston, <laughs> from Boston and New York, get down to it. Uh, for people to follow you or to get tickets, uh, give us your handle. Oh, I'm on Twitter. Um, yep. I think it's Niall Kennedy Boxer. And I'm on Instagram. It's I think it could be Niall Kennedy as well. But if you're looking for tickets, murphysboxing.com, you'll get tickets for the show. And... I, I'd imagine Lou, Lou de Bella Entertainment as well, but go to murphysboxing.com and say that you've been put in contact by myself and, and the work that I'm out with you. Okay, BWT and we'll make sure they get that message out for you. Let me make sure and see if we haven't, do we not miss anybody out before we disappear? Um, Mark Richard says, good, well, good trust in management then. Uh, I wish him all the best. Hard division he's in at the moment. Well, I can assure you, I can show you now. I want me moving down to cruiserweight? No, I can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, but no, I'm not able to. Really? And, and, uh, yeah, you really, I, you really want to move down to cruiserweight? Really? At this not, time? No, not at the minute. No, but I'd say <laughs> after, after this, I think there'll be jumpers, though. Yeah. I think there, I think whoever wins this, they've, they've cleaned up the cruiserweight division. They might as well go back up there. You know, the heavyweight so. division, you better be careful. I mean, Breedis, he had a little step into the heavyweight division, and he was dangerous the way he knocked out, uh, uh, what's his name, Char. Mm. So Breedis, yeah, Breedis, I tell you, it's a tough fight for Mike at the start. But Mike Perez, I genuinely, I really hope the man I've seen turns up because he genuinely gifted. I don't think anyone's seen it yet. Well, for the Cruiserweight division, we hope that Mike Perez brings his very best and he proves you right and a lot of doubt is wrong. Yeah, I don't think he has doubters, I think. I think I think his talent is undoubted, but he just probably hasn't had the best camps, maybe, but he's, this camp he's left North on in terms. That's great to hear. Now, Kennedy, thank you so much for talking to BWTN Sports. Cheers, Imran. You're a gent as always. Thanks a million. No worries. And we wish you all the best. Thanks a million. Take care, champ. God bless. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. So there you have it. Another exclusive interview with Niall Kennedy, the unbeaten heavyweight who's going to be traveling over to Foxwood in America as the challenger for the IBO International heavyweight title not everybody can go down the traditional routes now I'll start his career late in his career and uh, hello he said himself a mediocre amateur record but uh, Murphy's boxing has taken him on and they take him on a path in America 
and he's looking to do big things. So that's it from BWTM for now. When he come back again, we'll be talking Golovkin and Canelo. Stay tuned.